CBNRM Community Based Natural Resources Management. That is the topic for this lecture and this is a continuation of the previous lecture that is integrated natural resource management, wherein we discussed about the various of philosophies of INRM, the life cycle of INRM, how to you know have the INRM plan, what are the different constraints in the implementation of INRM and various other points that we discussed in INRM. Now, one thing that I have uh, time and again mentioned during the lecture of INRM is that the participation of community, participation of, of, of the society that is critical for a successful integrated natural resource management. Now, here as you see that we are going to talk about community based natural resource management. The name itself it clearly says that community plays a critical role in natural resource management, then we call it community based natural resource management. In brief, we call it CBNRM, a very popular concept under natural resource management paradigm. Now, I will discuss about in detail that what is CBNRM and how actually it should be implemented in on site in different places. So, CBNRM basically refers to the collective use and management of natural resources in rural areas by a group of people with a self-defined distinct identity using communally or communally owned facilities. What does that mean? It means that within a community the resources will be managed by a particular community for the resources which are owned by that community. So, a certain amount of ownership is associated with that particular community. When there is a ownership, there will be definitely certain amount of sincerity in managing the natural resources or any resources for that matter. CBNM wrap approach, it combines the conservation objectives along with the generation of economic benefits for rural communities. It does not talk about only economic benefits, but on the other hand it also talks about conservation. Exactly this is what we discussed in case of INRM. Now, there are three key assumptions that are considered under CBNRM. What are those? First, locals are better placed to conserve natural resources. There is no doubt about that. Locals means the community who actually are staying within that particular ecosystem having those resources in and around them, they are the people who are better placed to conserve the natural resources. Second assumption, people will conserve a resource only if the benefits exceeds the cost of conservation, that is the basic principle. So, if people or community find that their effort for conserving a particular natural resource provide them more benefit, then they will automatically will take care of that resource. There is no second thought about that. The third assumption, people will conserve a resource that is linked directly to their quality of life. So, any resource if that is directly related to the quality of that particular community's life, again probably we need not to do much effort or need not to put much effort to manage resources there. Community will automatically take care and then we call it as community based natural resource management. When a local person, a local people or farmers quality of life is enhanced, livelihood enhanced, the you know the lifestyle itself get enhanced. So, their efforts and commitment to ensure the future well-being of the resources that are available in and around there are automatically will enhanced because they know that if they take care of those resources, then those resources will definitely enhance their livelihood, their life, quality of life. So, that is the you know clear cut understanding. Now, 
CBNRM also rests on the central hypothesis that if a resource is valuable and landholders have the exclusive right to that particular use, benefit from and manage the resources and then sustainable use is likely to ensue there because they are going to utilize that resource in a very judicious manner. If they come to know that that particular resource is very, very beneficial to their life. The benefits from management must exceed the perceived costs and that will take care of the sustainability of the natural resource management. So, how actually ensure that understanding? There is a hypothesis and this hypothesis that resource is actually valuable and it is going to benefit their life, improve their quality of life. So, that hypothesis contains three main elements that provide the conceptual foundation of CBNRM. And what are those three main elements? First, sustainable use as a conservation paradigm. So, any use of particular resource is basically will be under the conservation paradigm. Second, provision of economic incentives. If there is suppose little provisions of providing incentives for taking care of natural resources, obviously there will be lot of chances, the chances of sustainable natural resource management will increase multiple times. Devolutions and collective proprietorship. CBNRM rests on a central hypothesis that if a resource is valuable and landholders have the exclusive rights to use, benefit from and manage the resources and then sustainable use is likely to ensue there. Meaning that if community understand that managing a particular resource, natural resource is beneficial for their you know better quality of life, definitely they are going to take care of that particular resource in a sustainable manner. Now, this hypothesis content uh, three elements. What are those? The first one is the sustainable use as a conservation paradigm. So, any kind of uses of a particular natural resource has to take place within the conservation paradigm. Second, provision of economic incentives. So, that means management of a particular resource or resources, if community is provided with certain economic incentives, the chances of maintaining resources in a sustainable manner will be much higher. Third, the devolutions and collective proprietorship of resources is also important because in any community, the particular natural resource, it does not belong to a single individual, but the entire community. The sense of that uh, proprieties of common is very important for successful community based natural resource management. So, in essence CBNRM aims to create the right incentives of group or groups of resource users within a defined jurisdictions to utilize natural resource sustainably. So, that is the key word here. I repeat that CBNRM it aims to create the right incentives for groups of resource users means the community who are actually going to use or using the natural resources within a defined jurisdiction to use natural resource in a sustainable manner. So, CBNRM also promotes conservation through the sustainable use of natural resources. It enables the communities to generate income out of those natural resources which can be used for their development, promotes democracy and also good governance at the local institutions level. So, you see that CBNRM though it actually talks about natural resource management, but if natural resource management is you know taken care of in a sustainable manner with these three kind of elements into it then it can ensures not only better management of natural resources, but it can actually help achieving a larger goal that is you know 
true democracies and also good governance and thus the overall development of a rural area. So, you can understand the importance and the value of a quality CBNRM. Now, key elements of this just you know in the previous slide in this slide we discussed about uh, you know three main elements you know for that hypothesis of successful CBNRM. Now, we will look at that those elements in little more detail. CBNRM is based at the community level from the name itself it is clear. So, the community should be able to define themselves whether it is a whole village or a group of resource users or its members should agree to cooperate to take care of the resources that they are going to utilize for various you know purposes. So, it is the community or the group they have to take a call. CBNRM encompasses all natural resources that we just now discussed. The resources that people depend upon for their livelihoods, for their quality of lives generally mean renewable natural resources means which can be renewed naturally including water, forests, fisheries and wildlife. So, those are the you know major uh, resources that you will find that in any kind of rural setup are very very critical when it comes to CBNRM. CBNRM also involves management because the name itself also have the word management there and it implies that there should be some rules or regulation, a discipline system governing how, when or in what quantity the resource can be utilized by that particular community or the members of that community. And these rules must be set by the community themselves and they should understand and agree to abide by those rules. And they should also understand recognize that these rules are for the benefit of their overall growth. And it is expected that these rules will be recognized and respected not only within community, but beyond that community. So, these are three key elements that actually can facilitate a successful CBNRM. Now, I will talk about little bit on the aims of CBNRM. What actually a community would achieve if they follow CBNRM? CBNRM is done basically to obtain the voluntary participation of communities in a very flexible program or way that incorporates long term solutions to problems which are coming from the various uses of the natural resources. As I said in the previous lecture that if you have certain land use monopoly then definitely the natural resources utilized for that particular land uses will be diminished will be very high and with time it will get diminished. So, to balance that you need to have a kind of a adjustment in your land use in a particular area. So, that long term solution and problem coming out of the natural resource use also need to be looked at under CBNRM. It also introduce it helps to introduce a natural wildlife resources a new system of group ownership and territorial rights very very important territorial rights for the communities resident in the target areas means in an area suppose you are focusing on an area you need to understand that the people of that particular area their jurisdiction their ownership territorial ownerships also on the resources that are available in that particular territory. The management of these resources should be placed under the custody and control of the people who are residing at that territory. Is it clear? I repeat the management of these resources which are there in within one territory must be given to the people who are residing at that particular territory. Third, it is to provide appropriate institutions under which resources can be legitimately managed. The word legitimately again is important managed and exploited by locals for their direct own benefit. And these benefits could be in the form of income, 
employment, production of pensions, so and so forth. Fourth point, to provide technical and financial assistance to communities who will join the program to enable them to realize their own objectives. What does that mean? Means CBNRM, it also provides technical and financial assistance to those communities who will join into this program and thus it will enable them to realize to fulfill their objectives means what they actually want to achieve, CBNRM will also facilitate that process. And that brings to the next aspect which is the objectives, objectives of CBNRM. Now CBNRM, it actually facilitate or devise a management strategy which aims towards reducing the poverty, conserving natural resources and promote good governance decentralizations in a single process. So that is the most important that all those things starting from poverty, conservation of natural resources means that in one hand through CBNRM you try to reduce the poverty but you also keep in mind not to exploit the natural resources indiscriminately. So, you conserve natural resources as well and then you promote good governance, decentralizations within one single process and the process which leads to CBNRM. Now, if you see this particular figure, it will actually explain it much more clearly. CBNRM, it helps to achieve poverty reduction in one hand, natural resource conservation on the other and good governance. Now, these all these three important component, they interact with each other means CBNRM, if you follow this, then basically you are actually following three very critical aspect. One is reducing poverty, natural resource conservation, good governance automatically. So, if this three aspect is taken care of, in any community, you can be sure that this is the best ingredients for a sustainable development society. So basically, CBNRM will lead towards sustainable development. So today, we are talking about sustainable development goals, right? We have couple of SDGs which are very important. Most of the countries across the world are working towards that. So, CBNRM can be a very effective way to achieve those sustainable development goals. Framework, what are the framework or how actually CBNRM should work in a, any existing system? Because the framework of any new program is very, very important. Now, the development policies and legislations of CBNRM are well developed. And this is not something new. This has been going on for some, some time, you know, many places across the world. So, what are the framework? What kind of framework CBNRM uh, largely follows? It uh, tries to identify the problem and challenge at the first, you know, instance. Try to define the objectives, identify the policy options that are available to address those objectives help in choosing a policy option or plan and thus developing policy statements. It also assists in developing implementation strategies, including formulation of legislation if need be. Then monitoring and evaluation of implementation, very critical step. We discussed it in also in case of INRM. Finally, reviewing and revision of policy based on the lessons learned from the monitoring and evaluation process. Continuing framework of CBNRM policy, there are three distinct level of CBNRM, namely national, intermediate and local level. Now if you uh, look at that at the national level, it normally talks about the policy, the national policies, the legal framework which actually lays the foundation for implementation method. At the national level, C 
CBNRM comprises of the policies, funding, rules, regulation and so and so forth. Then comes the intermediate level where CBNRM tries to link with the public sector different reforms. At the intermediate level, CBNRM tries to reach to the public sector, you know, in different way and the frameworks laid by the central government are given in the hands of the public sector and they implement the project to its reality by interacting with the local community. Then comes the third level, local level, right at the ground. Local level involves the common people for whom CBNRM is and who are actually party to this CBNRM of the particular area who are the true carriers of the management techniques. And the local level involves rights, responsibilities and decision making regarding the conservation of natural resources. So, the local level actually is the level where the action takes place. National level, a larger domain policy and different kind of rule regulations are developed. Intermediate level, CBNRM tries to get into the public sector reforms, tries to work with different you know, stakeholders at the state level and then it also try to link with the different schemes that had been developed, proposed by central government and then try to implement it with you know local people. And then finally, as I said at the local level, that is the place where all the actions takes place. People work at the ground level for you know their uh, better management of their natural resources and thus they ensure their future sustainability, good life and also enhanced livelihood. Mm -hmm.